Hello and welcome to the kickoff show of Formula Drift Insider. My name is Ryan Sage. Formula Drift Insider is a weekly web-based show that will follow all the happenings of Formula Drift, not only here in the United States, but also around the world. The show will feature a weekly recaps of global events, interviews with key figures, tech tips, and the show will also tackle issues in the series in an open and honest way. In short, we hope Formula Drift Insider will serve not only the needs of the most devout FD follower, but also any new fans that have just discovered the sport. And with that being said, let's look at a quick recap of the events that have happened thus far stateside. Formula Drift historically starts off in Long Beach, the home of Formula Drift, and this year would be no different as a series opener shot out of a cannon hosting 16,000 plus fans, which is a new series record. In 2010, we saw Vaughn Gittin Jr. dominate with six podiums in his Monster Energy Drink Falcon Tire Ford Mustang. And though we would have a Mustang on the podium in Long Beach, it was local driver Justin Pollock who would take home the top spot. JTP faced Matt Powers who would take second place with Daijiro Yoshihara rounding out third. Next, the series moves southeast to Brazelton, Georgia and Road Atlanta. The Road Atlanta track is considered by many of the drivers to be one of the most fun yet challenging tracks in the series. And this time we would see the historical pattern of success at Road Atlanta developed by Daijiro Yoshihara and Darren McNamara. Both drivers historically have done well at Road Atlanta and it was an all fireworks finale with Daijiro Yoshihara coming out the victor, Darren McNamara in second and Toshiki Yoshioka rounding out third. Formula Drift kicked off June with a brand new event at Palm Beach International Raceway in Florida and this event would prove to be quite interesting from the beginning as Formula Drift officials scrambled to make adjustments to the original course layout that proved to be too dangerous after what was said to be an equipment mix-up. We got word from Formula Drift Operations Director Andy Luck who said we were supposed to have ample barricades and catch fence for debris but when we did not we went ahead and made the call to test without it. It was shown to be too dangerous for drivers and fans and we will certainly fix this for next year. Judges Tony Angelo, Ryan Lantane, and Andy N redesigned the course, and we were underway in Florida. In competition, Daijiro Yoshihara missed his chance at a third straight podium by being overly aggressive against Kyle Mohan in the round of 32, and it would be Darren McNamara, Vaughn Gittin Jr., and Justin Pollock who would take advantage of this costly air by putting together an all-ASD, all-Falcon podium. JTP would beat Vaughn in the final, putting him in a comfortable lead for the championship against his teammates Darren McNamara and Daijiro Yoshihara. Wall Speedway, known as the gauntlet to fans and drivers alike, was where round four of the championship would take place. And right out of the gate, Mother Nature joined the track by building a gauntlet herself. Friday afternoon, right after the field was qualified, a supercell storm came into the paddock and poured its chaos on the course for over 10 minutes. While the damage done was able to be fixed overnight and the sun shone the next day, chaos on the track would reign supreme with some incredible wrecks. The other reign that was put to halt was that of Justin Pollock, as veteran drifter Conrad Grunewald, absent from the podium since 2005, took the top spot from JTP, putting him in second place, and Daijiro Yoshihara picking up another podium in third. Finally, we made it to round five, Monroe, Washington, outside Seattle, where this round has to be the single most significant event for Justin Pollock in 2011. JTP, who started the event with a commanding lead in the championship, saw that wiped away as he would be knocked out in the round of 32. If you recall, Daijiro Yoshara did the exact same thing in West Palm Beach with JTP going on to win the event. And wouldn't you know, Daijiro Yoshihara would battle through the entire field in Seattle to go on and win the event with Chris Forsberg in second and a well-deserved and fitting third place for Frederick Osbo, who was wearing the banner of his home country of Norway in light of the terrible tragedy that occurred there this same weekend. So that is where we stand in Formula Drift thus far in 2011 with only two more rounds to go. The championship is coming right down to the wire again. All that seems certain is that we might have a new champ this year and that champ could very well be Falcon driver Justin Pollock. JTP as he is known is having a career season with podiums in three out of five events and two wins. We had a chance to get JTP off the track out of his suit to sit down with this Formula Drift All-Star. What I'd say to Dai would be, you know, first, congrats on his win in Seattle. Way to step it up, uh, you know, uh, bad cir circumstance with my car, the clutch braking, and, you know, he had to really step it up to uh, gain first place, and he did it. So, you know, uh, good job to him. But uh, going into Vegas, uh, you know, just try to keep it up because I'm going to be coming for you for sure. Uh, uh, I got to step it up for the last two events, beginning in Vegas. I did there, I did pretty well there last year. Um, made a slight mistake in top eight, and it cost me 
um, pretty big, so I'm going to try to make no mistakes this time and finish up on that podium. You have to keep that in mind when you're on top that anything can happen. I mean, I was getting a little comfortable going into Seattle and, and look what happened. You know, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, you couldn't even like write it that that's going to happen because that's like the almost worst case scenario. If we don't have any mechanical failure, uh, I think I've had a, a really good season this year. Um, I've been really focused behind the wheel. Um, the AST team and, and Falcon have really given me a great car this year. Uh, starting out round one, you know, uh, we got the win there. And the car's been flawless, um, but when you start pushing a car real hard, things are going to break. And with the new powertrain uh, from Ford Racing, the, the engine that we have, it's, it's tough when you're, you know, kind of pushing the limits um, of everybody. You know, one of the fastest cars, um, one of the uh, best setup chassis. When you're pushing that hard, things are bound to break. So we're, we're finding the failures and, and, you know, getting resolutions to them. So. Uh, hopefully we'll be going in with a, a perfectly working car and we'll be coming out uh, doing what we do in every other event. All right, the first week's show is in the book and now we turn to Marcella for a preview of next week's show. Marcella. Thanks, Ryan. On our next show, we'll preview round six at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We'll also be recapping the international events on the Formula Drift roster so far. The president of Formula Drift, Jim Lau, will fill us in on the proposed changes to our finale at Irondale Speedway. As always, you can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and please email show suggestions and comments to insider at formulad.com. Finally, we invite you to head to our Facebook fan page where we have posted three different challengers for our Drift of the Week segment. Race there now, check out the action, and vote for your favorite drift. We'll see you next time on Formula Drift Insider.